The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Welcome to The Life You Want is Yours. This is Johanna Kern. Our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. Yes, we are capable of living such life, and it doesn't have to be difficult or hard to build it. Of course, when we have the appropriate tools and knowledge to do so, we are giving you such tools and tips during our shows. As usual, Patrick Kern, my husband, accompanies me on today's show. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. We are meeting on air every week at the same time. Here is the recap of our previous shows. Johanna told us that In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. It is important to us that you will understand that. Our life is our own journey, and only we can decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. When we get used to a situation that doesn't benefit us anymore, but we have learned how to operate and survive under the circumstances, such situation becomes our habitual safety. It means that we got stuck in our subconscious fears. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. We also learned how we create our reality with our thoughts. According to recent developments in science, the structure of the universe, with all its laws and forces, implies that intelligence existed prior to matter. And, only because people identify with their body, they believe that when their body perishes, their consciousness will too. We already know from Einstein, Tesla, and other scientists, such as Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, who received the Nobel Prize in 2013, that everything that exists is simply energy. What does it mean? It means that everything that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive, our thoughts, emotions, or electrons, being a part of one huge energy field, vibrates. And although nobody has ever seen or weighed an electron, just as nobody has seen or weighed an emotion or a thought, they all behave in the same way, affect how we function, how we progress and live our life. Our thoughts vibrate just as radio waves, and just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations, and that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather, the illusion of reality, that we create and co-create whether we are aware of it or not. And we compare the latest discoveries in science with what some of the many philosophical, religious beliefs have been saying. While science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is and containing everything within. No matter whether it is science or a belief system that resonates the most with our own inner truth, some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole, 
and we are all connected. Our awareness depends on how we let ourselves progress as the consciousness that we are. It is all up to us. We decide who we are and who we want to become. We are the consciousness that experiences itself through our life and has a choice to progress or not. Consciousness is what it is, a vibration, a current, a signal. Not long ago, the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are beyond our senses, not being limited to our body. And that is the consciousness we talk about during our shows. We also talked about our subconscious programming. According to science, our subconscious rules 90% of our thinking and behavior. It is responsible for our habits, emotions, automatic reactions, defensive mechanisms, etc. Remember, the subconscious programming, which may keep you stuck in unwanted situations in life, can be changed to whatever you want it to be. There are tools helping you to do so, and we share them with you during our shows. You, and only you, decide what you want and what you don't want. It is your birth-given right to live the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. And it doesn't have to be difficult or hard to change things and make them the way you want them to be. It can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. And now it is your turn to live the life you want. Johanna also told us that When we are small children, before we learn from others that their happiness depends on anything else but their innate joy of life, we are naturally happy. Small children, unless hungry, ill or hurt in any way, usually wake up smiling and welcome each day with natural curiosity and passion. Then, step by step, their environment begins to change their point of view, imprinting in them a set of conditions, rules, expectations and demands. The child quickly learns that if he, she, does not comply, the appreciation for the child, or even sometimes love, is withdrawn. Together with the set of rules how to behave, what's good, what's wrong, what's desirable and what's despicable, comes a set of labels. You are good, you are bad, you are black, you are white, you're a boy, a girl, you're awful, short, small, too young, too old, too skinny, too fat, too dumb, too stupid. In other words, do as I told you, be as I told you. You are not good enough and I am better than you. What happens next? Of course, we begin to believe that we are not allowed to be who we are because we are not good enough and that we are not worthy of having the life we want that is happy, healthy, fulfilled and, at least in some way, comfortable, if not wealthy. We all want to live such life and only the details vary from person to person depending on our preferences, talents, passions, or interests. And although we often have many opportunities to build such life, we either don't follow them, not believing in ourselves, or, equally often, 
we don't recognize such opportunities because we don't trust ourselves anymore. It is because we have learned to blindly follow the priorities imprinted in our subconscious by our environment, either by our family or teachers, the society, or a belief system we had acquired by the default, because it dominates in the parts of the world we live in, or the times we live in. How do we find out who we are? To begin with, we need to take off all the labels given us by society and which we accept it as truth about ourselves. The first step is to learn how to be with ourselves alone for not less than 20 to 30 minutes a day. Yes, turn off that TV, leave that bar, club or a party earlier or go to it later. Stop working, overeating, playing video games or whatever it is you are doing to escape the feeling of emptiness. Spend some time with yourself. Close your eyes, take a deep breath and hold on to the moment of stillness and silence. Now imagine your world according to your heart, not according to the noise of your mind, the conditioning of your past, your fear of life or what drives your ego. Imagine your world the way you feel it, deep inside your heart. The world according to your heart is the reality you truly want and need to create for yourself if you want to remain happy, reach fulfillment, and continue to progress as the consciousness that you are. We also gave you the next step in the game, Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life, a game that can help you change any life situation and achieve what you want. We will give you the next step in that game later in today's show. Today we will talk about how to stay on path chosen by our heart and how it is possible to change our reality in a blink of an eye. What does it take to free oneself from the circumstances that affect us, creating instead the circumstances that are in alignment with who we are? I also invite you to visit my blog on my official site www.johannakern.com where you find many helpful articles that can help you overcome stressful situations and create the life you want. We talk about such topics during our shows in more details and I answer some of the questions sent to me by listeners and readers in the later part of each show. Thank you for sending me your questions. As usual, I answer some of them today and your identity will not be revealed. Those of you who would like to send me your questions and get an answer on air can email me at radio at johannakern.com. After the break, we'll talk about our today's topic. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. When we are walking toward our goals, when we are following our heart, life becomes joyous and friendly. What is the simple secret behind that? Why is it that when we align ourselves with the true vision of our heart, the whole world seems to conspire to help us get where we want? It is because the frequencies of our thoughts have changed. Let me briefly explain how it works. What we think and do is the blueprint for what we receive and who we become. Our thoughts behave exactly the same as our actions in the huge energy field that everything belongs to, from human cells to planets, stars and galaxies. Everything we know and can think of 
behaves according to the eight universal laws for energy. I will talk more about the eight universal laws for energy in our future shows. From Einstein, Tesla, quantum physics and ancient mystics, philosophers and belief systems, we know that everything is energy. Science continues to research our origins and physics discovers more and more about how the whole system works. Our thoughts are energy. When we send out a thought, it behaves like other energy waves, vibrating with a particular frequency, either higher or lower. And that depends on what kind of intention lies behind our thought. It has been observed by researchers that the higher the frequency of vibrations, the higher the impact they have on everything else. In other words, the higher the vibration of our thought, the faster and more profoundly we create our reality, or rather the illusion of it, as we already know from quantum mechanics. That phenomenon has been observed by scientists and also by the ancient masters, mystics and philosophers. It has been also observed that expanded consciousness, altruism and unconditional love are the higher virtues, being of the highest frequency and falling into the category of gamma brainwaves that have the biggest power changing reality in a blink of an eye. Think, for instance, of Mahatma Gandhi and how he had affected many lives with his highly developed consciousness. When we align with the true vision of our heart, our thoughts no longer vibrate with the lower frequencies typical for our ego and our negative subconscious programming. No matter what's on our path, no matter what kind of obstacles, delays or detours, we step ahead with faith and trust that we will get to our destination. We become the heroes of the day, day after day, powerful, having faith in ourselves and trusting our life. We are no longer dependent on circumstances. Circumstances don't make us. We create the circumstances according to what we believe, think and feel. Such is the power of our thoughts when we are aligned with the true vision of our heart. When we find out what truths are important to our heart, the next step is to look at our life and look at our dreams. Are they in alignment with the vision of our heart or are they the outcome of our subconscious fears and negative programming? Will they help us become who we are meant to be or are they just the desires of our ego driven by our subconscious insecurities, never satisfied and always looking to gain more of this and more of that? We need to remember that fulfilling the desires of our ego never brings us true happiness. We only experience short-lived victories, which leave us with more and more feelings of disappointment with ourselves and emptiness in life. And that is because, just like any other low-frequency vibrations, ego desires cannot produce anything lasting or leading to true happiness. The only lasting success is always, with no exception, aligned with our purpose and fulfilling our purpose is what brings us true happiness in life. Discovering your purpose is a process. You don't have to know it today, not even tomorrow, but you will find out what it is sooner or later when you let yourself discover the truth of your heart and start following it with faith and trusting your own process. Nothing 
makes us happier than following our heart, doing what we love, and knowing that we serve a purpose that is beneficial to ourselves as well as to others. What is built on truth becomes truth. What is built on love becomes love. So-called dharma, that is, purpose, spoken of in some philosophies, holds that there are no spare parts in the universe. Each of us is being born with unique set of talents and perspective that has never been expressed in the world before. That means that in order to fulfill your unique, wonderful purpose, you need to be true to yourself and trust the part of yourself that has been trying to direct you to your higher purpose. No matter what your purpose, once you commit to finding it, it will fill your heart with joy, inspiration, and satisfaction with life. For every single person, his or her own truth is different. It would correspond not only with who they have become, but even more so with who they are becoming. It has nothing to do with their fear of life, ego drives, or what is expected from them by society, the old programming or conceptions of how to live one's life. Each of us has a chance to express our own uniqueness and fully evolve into the beautiful person we were meant to be. Do we have to give up everything we've achieved this far in life to make it healthier and happier? Of course not. There is nothing wrong with achieving what we want and enjoying life. However, it is important to start building our life in a way that will allow us to live from our truth and maintain conscious happiness built on that truth, filling our mind with peace and heart with joy letting us thrive physically and emotionally and experience a fulfilling, beautiful life. Each of us has a unique song in our heart that needs to be heard. It is time to let it out. It is time to let the world enjoy and benefit from all the gifts we have to offer. When to start? It is never too early or too late. Talk with your own heart, trust your own heart, make a commitment to yourself and treat your word like gold, and it will bring you gold. Each time you do what you say, you train yourself to be reliable. Then you will be able to create what you want in the world. The world has faith in you, your life has faith in you, and so do I. It's time for you now to see yourself as the person you can trust. You are a magnificent human being, and you can create what you want. Be who you are meant to be. Own it. Enjoy it. It's your turn to shine in the world and have the life you want. And now, I would like you to repeat after me a very useful affirmation. We have been repeating this affirmation for the past weeks. As we know, repetition of such positive statements lets us affect our subconscious in a positive way. The other important thing is an appropriate environment and timing. Our shows provide such positive environment and timing for our subconscious to accept the positive messages. The affirmation comes from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life and goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. 
I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Wonderful. Well done. We will repeat this affirmation at the end of the show during our usual short relaxation routine in which I am guiding you to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. And during our shows, I always give you more useful tips to change what you need to change, to build and live the life you want. After the break, I will answer some of your questions. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. This question is from Scott. I've been working as a bartender for five years, and I've been making good money and putting some away. I have to confess that I have failed my exams at a pharmacy school, which made me feel pretty low, since my family expected me to pass them with flying colors and get a job at my uncle's pharmacy shop. I really don't have any interest in becoming a pharmacist, and I have no idea how to explain it to my parents. They insist on me doing what they want me to do with my life. I moved out of their house two years ago and have been on my own ever since. Ever since I was a child, I loved animals and my dream is to become a veterinarian one day. I looked around to find out about veterinarian schools in my area, but this is as far as I could go. I'm afraid that I will fail just as I failed my pharmacy school. It is easier for me to just dream about what I want to do than actually start doing it. What can I do to stop my fear? One of the most common paralyzing fears in life for many of us is the fear of failing at what we attempt. Often, because of that fear, we don't even try. We'd rather forsake our dreams. We'd rather give up on our deepest need for happiness than face our terrifying fear of failure. We often envision what we deeply desire for ourselves, but when we are stuck in our fear of failure, we don't follow our dreams. Yet our dreams need our help to come true. We need to reach for what we want. They will never become our reality unless we stop procrastinating and make the first step. As long as we back off after a few disappointments, believing that we are doomed to fail, our beliefs shape our reality and so we might experience more disappointments on our path. We are doomed to fail if we believe that we are doomed to fail. From how you write about your experience, I assume that you perceive yourself as a big disappointment for your family. Now the question is, is your family going to live your life for you? Are they the ones to decide your future? Or are you the one who makes such decisions? I think you need to say it clearly to your parents and stop worrying about fulfilling their expectations of who you need to be and start fulfilling yours. Because of your past experience, you didn't move forward, and today you might quietly wonder what would have happened if you did move forward and what would have happened if you'd succeed. It is not easy to overcome the fear of failure when you are surrounded by people who confirm your worst fears. And that is what happened to you. Again, your life is your life. You need to make it loud and clear to everybody else. And you never know what happens when you speak your own truth. What scares you in your mind might not be as bad at all. To begin with, it is important to understand and accept that any perception can be changed. We all know failure. We have failed many times when we were learning to walk. 
It didn't stop us from walking, did it? How about riding a bicycle, swimming, talking, reading, writing, cooking? It is important to understand that failing is not so bad. It's just the other side of the coin called success. When you toss a coin, it lands on one side. If you don't like how it landed, you can flip it again. You can flip it as many times as you want until it lands the way you want it. Failure is just another step to success. Remember also that there is always someone else in the world who has already done things similar to what you dream about, which means it can be done. It can be done by a human, just like you. If others could do it, you can do it too. By the way, if we think that we attempt at something that never has been done before, it is good to remember that there are and there always will be situations when someone, just like you, does something for the first time. That's right, the first time has been done too. Realize that your fear of failure is stopping you from fully and happily experiencing your life. Fear of failure equals not believing in yourself, wasting your potential, and experiencing lack of joy of life. And lack of joy of life equals lack of fulfillment and success. In other words, not following your dream will never bring you happiness or true success in life. You should start with small steps and let yourself succeed at them. For instance, find a veterinary clinic and volunteer with them. Perhaps they will even let you shadow the veterinarian, observe him or her at work. Find out what it is about and see if it's for you. Once you do it, you will gain more confidence and you will be able to apply that confidence to your dreams. Get any help you'll find to build up your self-esteem and go for it, Scott. I know you can do it and I wish you the best of luck on your journey to the life you want. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. This next question is from Mina, who wrote, A month ago I quit my job in a hospitality business due to a repetitive verbal harassment from one of our customers, which turned out to be my employer's cousin, so it wasn't really easy to find justice in this case. To make a long story short, I worked in the hospitality business for 10 years, but my heart was always in arts, and I recently won an illustration contest. I have used most of my spare time to work on commissions and my portfolio. I am newly married and relatively young. I want to give my dream a shot while the opportunity is here and become a children's book illustrator. Winning the contest gave me some confidence, but at the same time I am not sure if I'll find the strength to follow my dream. Life taught me that reality is harsh and if you don't face up to its expectations, we might end up somewhere at the bottom. What should I do? I am sorry to hear that you had to go th through such an emotional situation. Sometimes life serves us such situations in order for us to stop, look back, assess what we have done and what we haven't done, to be aligned with the vision of our heart. We talked about such situations and why they appear on our path in previous shows and you can find them in our archives on my official site. It is very good that you have not been stuck in anger or resentment about what happened to you and instead you are looking forward to what you can do in your life to have it the way you want. Yes, by all means, you should become a children's book illustrator and your current success winning the contest will for sure help you to find the job you dream about because it speaks highly of your talents and your determination 
you have also prepared yourself for such opportunity by creating your portfolio. You have done already much more than you can even imagine. Many of my readers ask me what is the best and easiest way and the quickest one to fulfillment of our dreams. While the path to fulfilling our dreams will be different for everyone, yes, there could be a few steps that we all can learn to find out how to make it easier for ourselves. To begin with, we need to declare our dreams. As long as we see ourselves as separate from our dreams, there is a gap between ourselves and our dreams. Whatever is born from us is us. It is our whole life that we are dreaming. As we know from quantum mechanics, we live in an illusion of reality. And yet that dream is not separate from us. We do create our reality with our thoughts. And that reality is actually our dream come true, we might say. You need to believe in your dream. And you need to imagine yourself being your dream fulfilled. That's right. Not having it fulfilled, but being it fulfilled. What does it mean? There is truth in what you might have already heard. When you say, I am, you become what you say. Don't try to understand that through your logic. Our mind's logic has nothing to do with it. Our mind's purpose is not to reason about things that it cannot apply to what it has already learned through our experience. It cannot comprehend things that it cannot find any experiential references for. Look at things related to your consciousness, the one that you are beyond your senses, through the truth of your heart. That is the unconditioned core of who you are. Your heart will tell you, without any mistake, what is important and beneficial for you, not your mind. Imagine how you feel having your dream fulfilled. Imagine what people around say to you, how they congratulate you. Imagine the day you and your dream became one. Live it. Until you live your dreams, they are just dreams. Also, Mina, bear in mind that there is more than just one way of being a children's book illustrator. It is becoming more and more possible to self-publish children's books. Color Kindles make it very convenient for families to carry around a library of picture books. Look around for more opportunities and don't get stuck in just one idea of how you can do what you want to do. The best way for your dream to become your reality will present itself to you and it will be in front of you when you least expect it that's the magic of life we live it we plan it and we let it surprise us with the good news good luck to you i'm sure you will do great the life you want is yours with johanna kern And now it's time for the next step in our game. Nine pennies can change your life. Put one IP in your BLA. That is, put one investment penny in your Better Life account. Please go to the description of the game on my blog, on my official site, if you don't know what we are talking about. You have now bought powerful thoughts of faith. Once you have followed your heart and listened to your intuition, have faith. The new path you stepped on after you went through the door that had opened in front of you will lead you closer to your goal. Yes, 
you might sometimes end up detouring and taking longer than you anticipated. However, later on, you will realize that there was a benefit in that. Remember, everything happens for a reason. The journey might be more important for you than achieving the goal. Time limit for step six? None. Your journey will take as long as needed. However, you can continue to step seven in our game in one week. Reference. In our story, the younger brother followed the path in the bushes, although he couldn't see where it was leading. He had faith, never gave up, and so the path took him to the hill, which was the next milestone on his journey. You too will get to the next step. Trust and have patience. Trust, trust, trust. You are getting there. Have fun with it. Don't worry if you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the next step. You can simply go to my official website www.johannakern.com and find the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game on my blog. We are adding there the next steps in the game after each show. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. In the following short relaxation, I will be guiding you now to repeat some affirmations to help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step -step program which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. I also recorded some CDs which can be listened to in a state of a deep relaxation while I am guiding the listeners through the process of reprogramming your subconscious. Such tools as those are very effective and everyone can find on the market whatever will suit your preferences and needs. It is very important to deal with our subconscious programming while we are changing our thoughts to be more positive so that we could create the life we want. And now please relax and listen to the following. Find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of 10 to 1. 10 9 8 7 6 Five, four, three, two, one. 
relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me. If I fully embrace my own worth, I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day -day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it. Any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Excellent. You've done very well. You are fully relaxed, yet energized and happy to continue with your day. Thank you for participating. As usual, in the next show we will talk more about what we can do to live the life we want, how to overcome our fears or obstacles. I will also respond to more of your questions without revealing your name. Please send me an email to this address, radio at johannakern.com. Have a beautiful week. Till we meet again at the same time. Bye bye now, but we'll see you next week. The life you want is yours with Johanna Kern.